Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Uh, fair warning, this is a, well, as some, one, of, one of you described it, it's one of the more nerdy videos. Uh, we'll be doing math and uh, numbers and things, and not gameplay today. So if you're after some, some hot uh, battleship action or anything like that, sorry, uh, next time. <laughs> this is not the video for you today. Uh, this is me trying to do something that we do sometimes in software engineering, which is called, re well, reverse engineering of sorts. I mean, I don't have the source code, obviously, but from observation, I'm trying to figure out how does the, how does the um, shell and damage algorithm and an armor algorithm work in World of Warship Splits, because this is something I'm really curious about. So, let's begin. Uh, again, warning, math ahead. Let's begin with a couple of factors. So uh, we just need a couple of definitions so we know what we're all talking about. Let's begin with what I call the alpha damage or theoretical damage. This is the number that you see in, well, if you look at the ship in the menu and it says uh, AP damage 800, that is what that is. That is the theoretical damage. That is not the damage you're actually gonna cause to the, the enemy ship. This is just what you could theoretically cause if the enemy ship had no armor whatsoever. And I mean that in a literal, not a figurative way. So let's we'll start with that, and it's called that DA. When we fire our shells, uh, there are a couple of factors that that um, that come into play when it comes to computing. Let's say what we call the shell penetration. That's uh, that's the potential shell pe uh, penetration. Let's call that PS. Factors here are the range. How far away is the enemy ship? How long did the shell have to fly through the air to get there? That makes some sort of sense because there's something, there's such things as air resistance and shells take a while to get to the target. They don't have the same power as when they left. Um, the, each shell for, or each gun and in each ship is slightly different. Uh, I don't know if, mus if muzzle velocity is an actual factor in the game. But I mean, it is in PC, and we might assume that it is as well in the game. But um, the muzzle velocity would be the the speed that the shell has by the time it leaves the barrel. Depends on the charge that you have, depends on the length of the barrel, and depends on all kinds of things like the weight of the shell. So uh, we're not going to factor that in here because we really don't have any information about it. But we we have to factor in that every gun and every shell behaves differently. So. We've got the range, let's call that R. The next thing we have to consider when we're talking about penetration is the ammunition type. There are currently three ammunition types in the game, armor piercing, high explosive, and semi-armor piercing. The semi-armor piercing at this point only exists for one of the Italian premium ships, but uh, the regular armor piercing has more penetration and does more damage, but has a different mechanic when it comes to dealing damage. High explosive has less penetration, does usually less damage, but has the chance of setting fires. And the last factor we're gonna need here is the captain skills. So there are two captain skills that affect how uh, the shells are potentially penetrating. It's the upper piercing cap shell and the, uh, the inertia fuse high explosive skill. One of them improves the penetration of the HE shells. One of them improves the penetration of the AP shells. So let's, um, let, let's try to compute the potential shell, shell penetration. If all these are factors, we're going to start with our base penetration, which is, some form, which is just some form of value that comes out of, that, that is inherent to the gun, right? We don't know these factors, we don't know this value, but every gun has a different base penetration with, it, with its shell. Uh, we multiply that with the range, so a range would be a factor, so something like 0 0.8 for, uh, for I don't know, a particular, for, for saying that the shell has lost 20% of its penetration power over the distance that it needed to travel in order to hit the target. Then we have the ammunition type, which again gives us a factor uh, to add to, uh, or to, to multiply with, in depending on what, which, what uh, ammunition we're using, which has more or less penetration. And then we still need to throw the captain skill in there. And then we get a uh, what I call a, a potential shell penetration, or PS, in a certain amount of millimeters of armor. 
probably just a quick reminder. This is me writing up theories, right? This is not officially confirmed by Wargaming or in any way supported uh, that, that these theories are correct. They might be or they might not be. But um, I think I'm relatively close with this. Anyway, so let's do an example. Let's say we have a base penetration of 150 millimeters of armor. Let's say that's a, that's a 200 millimeter armor piercing shell for all, all I know. Uh, these are theoretical values, I don't know. Uh, let's say our range factor from, from our distance is uh, 0 0.8. And let's say our ammunition type is armor piercing. So we're getting a 1.0 modifier for, um, for penetration. It could be that a high explosive then has a, I don't know, a 0.7 modifier. It depends again on the gun. So I don't think the modifier for penetration difference between armor piercing and high explosive is static. I think that guns have individual values because you do have ships that can do much better penetrations like the, the, the Nelson, for example, with high explosive uh, that is coming very close to the armor piercing penetrations. Uh, let's say we've got the uh, APCS captain skill and give that another five uh, another five percent. So we've got a one uh, one point oh five uh, modifier, and we multiply that all up. So with all these values considered, we would get a uh, hundred twenty six millimeter potential penetration. So with all the things considered, if if that thing impacts one hundred twenty six millimeters, it would probably be a full pen of sorts. So now that the shell has impacted. Uh, where, where do we go next from here? Well, the next thing we need to compute is the effective, what I call the effective penetration. Let's call that PE. For armor piercing, there are four possible penetration types. There's full pen, semi pen for 50% damage, over pen for 25, and bounce for no damage whatsoever. So how do we get to that? Well, we have to actually see what the armor thickness at the point of impact is. And then we divide the, uh, the potential penetration by the armor that we get. So for example, let's say we've, we've hit the main armor belt of something that uh, with our 126 millimeter penetration with our, with our eight inch shell that, ha uh, that has 200 millimeters of armor. So I don't know, it could be a, it could be a turret side for all I care, something like that. So. We've got 126 millimeter potential uh, penetration. We've got 200 millimeters of armor, which gives us a, uh, a effective penetration factor of 0 0.63. This, I assume, is probably threshold based. So I would assume that there's a, just for, for example, let's say if the effective penetration is less than 0.5, it's a bounce. If it's somewhere between 0.5 and 1, it's a semi-pen. If it's uh, somewhere between 1 and 1.5, it's a full pen. And if it's over 1.5, it's an over pen. Because an over pen or an over penetration is when the shell literally comes out the other side without arming. So you want to have enough penetration to get through the armor, but not so much that you're coming out the other end again. And again, these values are completely fictional. This is just to, uh, just to say the example. So now we have determined our effective penetration which means we need now the final factor that we all care about, which is the effective damage that we do. There are a couple of factors that play into, a, into the effective damage. Let's call the effective damage DE. We're starting with the A, our, our alpha damage, but, uh, and then we need our uh, effective penetration. But there's also another factor, and this is one that you can actually see. So if you look at the, um, if you look at the, the, ship, uh, the ship details, the ship statistics, you see a damage reduction factor, not the one for torpedoes, the one above that. And that percentage is a factor that your damage, that the alpha damage gets reduced, or the, the damage that you would take gets reduced by, and that comes up to be our effective damage. So the formula for that would then be, we've got our alpha damage multiplied by the effective penetration that we've got computed earlier, multiplied by one minus damage, damage reduction, because if you have a 10% damage reduction, you want to multiply it by 0.9. For example, and this is going to be our final example, let's say um, our eight inch armor piercing shell had a, has a alpha damage of 750. This is the value that you would see in the ship statistics. Now, we've got a semi-pen because we only had 126 millimeter of 
uh, effective penetration, but we've hit 200 millimeters of armor, which means we're multiplying this by 0.5. And we have a, let's say, 10% damage reduction on the enemy ship. So we're multiplying that by 1 minus, uh, 1 minus 0.1, which means we get an, an effective damage number out of the 750 theoretical damage of 338. Now, if you would sh shoot at a ship that has a lower damage reduction, it'd be more. If you would shoot at a ship that has less armor, it would be more because you would go to a full penetration. If you would shoot at a ship that has really very little armor, like a destroyer, and you're close, so your range factor hasn't reduced the, pen the potential penetration quite yet, you would end up with a value high enough, with an effective penetration high enough that you would overpin. Or if you would shoot at something that has a lot of armor on the side, your shell would just bounce off harmlessly and do no damage whatsoever. So, this is my little theory of how uh, at least if I was so if I was tasked to implement this, this is probably how I would approach it. Let, let me put it this way. This is how I would program this uh, this sort of problem. And um, I have no idea how close I am, but uh, the whole thing makes a lot of sense. And so far, I haven't really found any flaws in it. So if you have any kind of other different information, if you have different theories, if you have different ideas, I would love to hear them. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Uh, and uh, next time, I promise, we get some more gameplay again. <laughs> so that's it for today. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Bye.